so this was pretty clumsy over there so now let us do some organization with from and go to blocks so just like code we can use go to and from so i'm just typing go to i'm getting this yes this is available in the matlab libraries in signal routing so signal routing you get the from and the go to so we need to keep a tag for this so we will keep the input name itself as the tag so the go to tag is template right okay so now we will create one for each so to create a copy i just need to drag and drop but now we have both the same names so we need to change the names here so yes so again i'm dragging and dropping and changing the tag name so how do i get a from block there are multiple methods one going to the library and getting the other typing from and getting but the easiest way is just if you click this you get this blue arrow here which comes up just open this you will get the corresponding from tag so if i drag so for this i get an oil coolant and if you drag back from here you will get the corresponding go to tag so here we go so it is just that the same thing but it is somewhat organized without signals cross crossing so here it is okay it is just three signals but we might have four five signals used in eight nine places so just imagine the complexity so the from and the go to blocks come in very handy and also if you see that uh, you can click it goes to the link and here so you can choose the tags available here and it also goes to the corresponding input tag so for example if there is one more copy of it if i go here it goes there so this is a from sorry for that a copy of this i mean and i think it needs to have something yes so if you go it shows all the places so that is one of the places this is the other places so that's it from from and go to blocks they are nothing logically significant they just help us to organize things in a better manner okay so yeah now i have all those values with me now uh we just forgot the addition and subtra the blocks so here we go so the first one is we have the oil coolant threshold so we have the coolant temp minus the oil temp the second one we have the oil coolant threshold so let's take that from here so i just copy pasted it it has the oil cool temperature already and uh, so this one is between oil and coolant so i have used the same names because i have not changed so let this be between oil and ambient so oil is there i just need to change this to ambient and let us make the final copy over here yep so that was oil coolant that was oil ambient and this is going to be coolant ambient so yes we have it all right so we have three values coming and uh, 
so we are comparing this with the threshold the difference might be positive or negative and uh, it based on the stages for example the difference can be positive or negative so we can either choose to consider that or now we will just consider the absolute value so how do you compute the absolute value here just type abs simulink math operations you just get this so we are just trying to get the absolute value of difference now we are not worried so this we are using for simplification purposes here generally the temperature difference is considered but since we are in a constrained time so we just take the absolute value of the difference and compare it with the threshold okay now uh, we've come to this point uh, we are trying to implement this rationality and uh, yes so what else is pending okay this threshold should be uh, the difference should be greater than or less than our threshold so okay now let's take engine and oil the temperature should not vary much so it should be less than a threshold we will change it to less than or equal to in that way it's easy between ambient and coolant it should not be greater than or equal to something it can't be when it is freezing for example so the ambient is minus 20 and uh, even then the oil goes up to 110 120 whatever so this also should be less than or equal to a certain threshold wait a second so this is the difference between engine and oil so if the temperature difference is greater than a certain threshold or if the temperature difference is between less than a certain threshold thing is working fine but we want to so the correlation will be one and again if the difference between ambient oil is lesser than a certain threshold the correlation is one same thing for uh, ambient and uh, this is coolant so i have not changed the go to tag I go here i change it to engine coolant temp okay and we were discussing that this should be a function of engine of time so now we don't have the engine of time over here so we take it as a new input so engine based engine of timer or engine on timer so if you see both are important now both the engine of timer and engine on timer are important because uh, the moment we switch off the engine and we switch it on within 10 minutes the threshold is going to be of certain values and uh, when we switch on it is going to be another set of values so how do we do this so yeah what just seem to be a simple uh, rational here just doing this you know you see how many things so we need both engine off timer and engine on timer so we need this both engine off timer and engine on timer so uh what are we going to do how are we going to give the table so how do we decide which timer to use whether the off timer or the on timer so this was the one we were speaking about in vcycle how the developer goes in and finds his own strategy in realizing the higher level requirements so in our case the higher level requirement was simple we just needed to find the rationality between these three signals uh, that sol was given so but when we went in we are getting across so many things so now there is an engine off timer and an engine on timer so when the ignition is off obviously the engine off timer is going to start running so when the ignition has been on for a certain amount of time uh generally the we might think that somewhere from 5 to 10 or 15 minutes uh based on the design for the engine to stabilize the engine might take 3 4 minutes to warm up so generally if you leave your car idling you will notice that uh, without switching on the ac the fan will start at 10 minutes in some cars in some cars when it will start at 15 minutes so that is the strategy of the oem that when the fan should switch on and that is an indication that the engine has warmed up so what we can do is if 
we have the engine or timer less than a certain threshold so this will be calibratable and this can be depending on the oem so if the engine on timer is less than a certain threshold we will use engine off timer but if the engine on timer is greater than a certain threshold we will use the engine on timer itself so how do we do that so again now you see that uh, we can keep adding more and more things into the space but uh, it is better to create subsystem within subsystems so i am just putting on all them on side and now this threshold has to come from outside so what can be done we will go we will copy this name we will paste it here and now i am deleting all my thresholds this because it is going to it is something that is going to come from the outside so i select all right click on any one of them so if i right click outside it won't come so i need to select all which i want to put into the subsystem right click on any one of the components for example ambient temp so create subsystem from selection so this is my correlation logic subsystem so inputs and what are my outputs names so this is oil coolant correlation this is oil ambient correlation and this is coolant ambient correlation so so this is the subsystem which we have and what about the tags so we used some tags here so the tax visibility is not global we need to set tax visibility so what we can do is we can just select these six tags press control x so the tax kind of disappeared or let them be there we will choose to use these three here and so that's it so now here for safety we will use uh, different tag names just coolant generally it should not be an issue because the tax visibility is only within this subsystem it won't go into the other or back work but so here we go so now we need to calculate the threshold and how are we going to calculate the threshold so first we check uh, whether the engine on timer is greater than a certain threshold so i again go for a greater than block and i need a constant so i have a calibratable value here so it is engine on timer rational threshold so generally we use things like if engine it's ice or eng space on timer is tmr rational is rt nl so that is based on oems and how they use but here i'm using the full words uh, so that uh, it's easy for us to understand and make sure that when you give constants like this it makes some sense so that we are able to understand it in the future so if it is greater than a certain threshold i will be using my engine on timer values else i will be using my engine off timer values so what i'm going to do here i'm going to create enable subsystems so or simple i can just use a switch so here we go if the engine on timer is greater than a certain threshold i will be using it as a function 
if not yes but it's going to be different right if my engine off is going to be greater than a certain period of time my thresholds will be closer to zero but if my engine on is going to be greater than for a certain time my thresholds are going to be very different so there is no point in using lookup tables with the same input so what we need is so first we need to calculate the thresholds using lookup tables so we will have two subsystems again so i am creating a lot of subsystem because it is easier for us to understand this can all be put within one giant subsystem and be used but i prefer working in smaller and smaller subsystems so i am creating a new subsystem this is called that thresholds engine off and one more as thresholds engine on so this one goes here and this one goes here so the input for this is engine off timer and this is engine on timer so i just place them in the wrong places so on and oh so the error is there's one more on on the bottom so yes you can't have two things with the same name matlab is very particular about that okay so uh, how do i get the inputs so yeah i have the in my in is the engine on timer so i need three thresholds right so let them be simple lookup tables so how do i get a lookup table i go here go to lookup tables i get a 1d lookup table yes so now i need three lookup tables right so there are three thresholds actually so this one is going to be for am b and okay we will put them in the order in which they are in the other subsystems so they are oil coolant oil ambient and coolant ambient so oil coolant oil ambient and ambient coolant so how many breakpoints i have so the breakpoints i can mention as temp rational breakpoints and the table data is going to be oil coolant engine on so we are going to get that there because here this is oil engine on and here this is ambient coolant engine on so we need to copy the table rational breakpoints data so yes our tables are ready now so this is oil ambient this is oil coolant and this is ambient coolant so it is the same input so i don't want three outputs going in because we also have a switch so what i have i have a mux here so all the dead and it's three inputs so this is my out so it's one there 
engine on thresholds all right it's perfect so it's pretty much the same logic here Sorry that I just copy pasted that here. So this is engine of thresholds and the table breakpoints are going to remain the same but is just going to be the data of the thresholds so yeah here it is we've given both subsystems so this is the switch and now this data should go here so what we can do is we can okay we can have a dmux here so dmux the number of outputs is 3 so I'm just clicking this clicking this it gets connected now I connect this so all these three signals split as three go here and now I get my three correlation so this does not end here we've just looked into how to give the threshold so the next thing we will be seeing is how to use these three correlations and give the output as the temperature rationality fall and what are the actions we would be taking so uh, if you see this is the truth table we have so if everything is one we assume all sensors are working fine we can use the coolant temperature sensor for fan operation if we get oil temperature has error we are not worried ambient temperature has error uh, we are not worried because of fan we are using only coolant if nothing is working good yes that's a problem if either uh, we get 110s we still don't know which sensor is working wrong so we will have to throw an error we will have to ask the system to straight away throw error uh, the sensor is not working and make the fan work in full swing as per our requirements here the fan must be set to 100% set point when temp sensor throws an error if everything is one fine uh, if we have this we are confused uh, if oil temperature has error it's okay uh, here we are not worried so what do we do here so if our result is this if our result is uh, this and if our result is this we will be able to use the coolant temperature sensor and perform our actions for the remaining five things so we need to straight away set the error so how do we uh, put this logic how do we arrive at this logic from all these three errors and uh, did you notice one thing so this is just one subsystem of the entire thing we are having here I just wanted to maximize it so uh, I mean the rational is itself taking uh, I have the lookup tables here and uh, I have the logic here and apart from this I need to have one more block uh, which is going to throw my fault so probably one more subsystem uh, sorry so this subsystem is finally going to throw my fault outside right so uh, how do I just run this so every time if I make some changes in this should I be 
running the entire model and checking or so since there are so many inputs to this model i just want to check this how do i do this so this is where something called as a concept of libraries come into picture so we press this we get this right away but when i go here i get something called as library so in the next session uh what we will try to do is we will start working with libraries and try to understand their benefits uh, we will also try to complete this inputs rational block and uh, we will go out and create a dvp since now we have all this uh, input values set and uh, we can go on to define all these threshold values we will go out and try to create a dvp a design verification plan and how to verify the inputs along with the required outputs so that's it for today's session guys thank you